Hi everyone, I know exams are just around the corner and a lot of students out there have started studying for their trigonometry exams. Trigonometry is hard and it's especially hard when you have to memorize lists and lists of trigonometric identities in order to solve problems. Memorizing lists like this is very, very hard. I'm gonna show you a trick that kind of summarizes all of these lists and makes it a lot easier to remember. So here we go, it's called the super hexagon. What looks like our regular hexagon now is going to be converted into a super hex. And the way you do that is you first start with our definition. Tangent of an angle theta equals to sine of the angle theta divided by cos of the angle theta. The next thing we want to do now is we want to fill in the vertices of this hexagon. So we're going to start here with tangent of the angle theta. Over here I'm going to take the top, the numerator, this is sine of the angle theta. And the next one is going to be cos of the angle theta. To figure out what goes on this rightmost vertex, you simply go across the tangent and you get cotan. Very easy to remember. Now to remember what goes down here at the bottom, that's easy. Everything here on this right hand side starts with the letter C. So this here is cosecant of the angle theta. And at the end you're simply left with secant of the angle theta. Super easy to remember. Two, we start writing down our relationships. We already have one. This means we started here at tangent theta, then we went over, and we're gonna go over here in the clockwise direction initially. If you start in the clockwise direction, this is what our expression looks like. You start here at a vertex, the next one becomes the numerator, the one after that becomes the denominator. So what does that mean for our next equation? Well, we can also write down, what if we started at the sine? That means we would have sine of the angle theta must be equal to cos of the angle theta divided by cotan of our angle theta. Again, what if you started at the cos now? We started up here at this vertex. We would get cos of the angle theta equals to cotan of the angle theta divided by cosecant. Number four, let's start now at cotan. We're getting the hang of it now, I hope. Cotan is cosecant of our angle theta divided by secant of the angle theta. And number five, you start at cosecant, which must be equal to secant of the angle theta, divided by tangent. And last and certainly not least, secant of any angle theta must be equal to tangent of the angle theta, divided by sine of the angle theta. We have six relationships from just this simple hexagon. Not too bad for to get started. And so this here was going around our hexagon in a clockwise fashion. What happens now if instead of going around a clockwise fashion, I decide to go around the other side? Counterclockwise fashion. What are the expressions I'm going to come up with and how, I, how do I do that? So let's start over here again on our tangent. We're going to follow the exact same pattern as what we did. That would mean that tangent of theta equals to secant of our angle theta divided by cosecant. Uh, number two, we're going to move down this way. Secant of the angle theta must be equal to cosec divided by cotangent. Number three, cosecant. Hope you see how that works now. Cosecant equals to cotangent divided by cos. And number four down here, the next one is cotan would be equal to cos over sine. Number five, cos simply equal to sine over tangent. And the last one, sine of theta is simply equal to tangent of theta over secant of theta. There we go. <laughs> and this here is going around our hexagon here in the counterclockwise direction. So there we have one hexagon. We have 12 trigonometric identities. Let's see what else we can do. All right, I've modified the super hex a little bit here. I've connected the diagonals on this super hex and I've placed the one at the center. And this trick here involves the diagonals of the super hex here. And let's start with at the sign. If I go across and I multiply by cosec, cosecant, what I get here simply equal to the number at the center of my super hex, which is one. You can do two more relationships like this. What if you started at the cos and you multiplied by secant? 
This here must also be equal to 1 because I'm involving multiplications of diagonal elements. And the last one, tangent multiplied by cotangent of the angle must also be equal to 1. So there you go, three more relationships from my super hex, but we're not done yet. The super hex is not done yet. The super hex can also do complementary angles. Complementary angles are two angles that sum to 90 degrees. And the way you do that here is you simply connect the vertices of our super hex with a horizontal line like this. I can make three such lines for this super hex. And if I do that, it automatically tells me that sine of the angle theta, let's reduce that a little bit, the sine of the angle theta is simply equal to cos of 90 minus the same angle. I can also write the other relationship, tangent of any angle theta equals to cotan of 90 minus the angle theta. And the last one I can write down, secant of the angle theta equals to cosec, cosecant of 90 minus theta. There we go, three more relationships. What happens now if you decided to go the other way? All right, instead of connecting my vertices like this, what if I made a horizontal line like that? If you choose those ones, it also works, which means you can write that cosine of an angle, cosine of the angle theta is simply equal to sine of 90 minus theta. It also means that cotan of an angle theta must be equal to tangent of 90 minus theta. And the last one, cosecant of the angle theta must be equal to secant of 90 minus theta. There we have six more relationships, six more identities involving trigonometric functions. The super hex can also do Pythagorean identities. What I've done here is I've shaded three of the triangles inside our super hex, and I've put a just the dot here in the upper left hand corner of each one of those shaded triangles. What we're going to do here is we're going to go in the clockwise direction and all you have to do is simply sum the squares of the individual term and that equals to the third one. Let me show you how it's done. So we're going to start here at, uh, at our dot. That means we have sine squared. We move over in the clockwise direction. We'd add it cosine squared. That must be equal to one. Try the next one. Again, you start at the dot. So the dot is one squared, which is one, plus cotan of the angle theta squared must be equal to cosecant squared of the angle theta. And the last one, let's go over here. Start at the dot. We have tan squared plus one squared must be equal to secant squared of the angle theta. All right, there it is, folks. There is the super duper, super hexagon. Gives you about 20 equations or 20 of the identities relating these trigonometric functions. Hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Good luck on your exams.